Hello everyone, today we're going to try something different. I'm using a program called Universe Sandbox where you can basically simulate anything you want in space using, you know, physics. As 2020 is getting off to an amazing start, let's continue the trend by bombarding the Earth with lots of different objects. I thought I'd start off by revisiting the age of the dinosaurs and their demise. So we're going to throw a object about 10 kilometers across at the size of the one that hit off the uh, Yucatan Peninsula. So let's first of all generate a earth. Let's go and find that. It's like a nice earth. Let's pop that there. And that's spinning quite happily, unaware of what's about to happen to it. Poor thing. Next thing we want to do really is slow down the time a little bit, I reckon. Let's just slow that down. The danger is that when you throw an object at the earth, Everything happens too quickly with this program, so I'm going to pause it actually and go on to launch instead of orbit, else our meteorite will just orbit around the Earth. I think we're all set now, we just need to find an object about the same size as the meteorite that actually hit 65, 66 million years ago and wiped out three quarters of all the life on our planet. Quite sobering, isn't it? So Phobos, one of the moons of Mars, happens to be about 11 kilometers across. That seems like a really good substitute. So we'll plonk that there. And now I've been googling around and the velocity of this thing, according to the experts, is around about, they say about sort of 10 to 30 kilometers a second. So if we click on that one and we'll go into motion and that's a bit slow well it's fast by our standards three kilometers a second but by space standards that's quite slow so we'll stick in 25 which seems to be a mediocre mid range estimate of the one that occurred obviously the more speed the more force it's going to have when it hits the earth and the more spectacular it will be, unless you're living on it. Okay, I think we're all set now. I don't think I'm missing anything. Let's just hit the play button and see what happens. Spin to the side. Now, Phobos has kind of disappeared. I know it's here somewhere. It's got, there we go. There it is in the distance, approaching Earth. It's all happening very slowly. So let's speed things up a little bit. Yeah. Whoa, 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 slow down, slow down. And let's go around and have a look, see what's going to happen. So for every second, 20 seconds is passing, so time is sped up a little bit. Whoa. Oh, no. So this is 20 times normal speed. Just so you can see the action, you can see all that ejector flying out from the Earth and that will quite possibly rain back down Let's spin out a little bit I mean I've just aimed randomly at the earth um, it's not actually anywhere near where the meteorite hit when they hit the dinosaurs when the dinosaurs died out I mean um, but yeah I can already see some ejector sort of falling back to earth and causing some damage there and what else we got is that Africa? Is that South America? Oh, I need a bit of reference really to see where we are. Yeah, that's South America. So we've, we've hit a little bit south of Yucatan. By a little bit, I mean about probably a thousand miles. So what kind of long-term effect is this gonna have on the Earth? So we can probably look by, if I click on the Earth and to see what the temperature is currently, we're looking at 13.7 degrees so if I speed things up we are now at four days per second and you can see the temperature dropping there on the right hand corner it's going down to seven degrees so that's basically from where all that object has been thrown up in the atmosphere from that great big impact into the into the earth and it's blocking out the sun and you can see how oh, look it's gone all white hasn't it basically and we're now at minus 10 it's no wonder that three quarters of all life kind of ended on the planet when that impact occurred if that's an accurate simulation we're now currently at like minus 17 whether it was that cold back 
in 65 million years ago? I don't know, but I'm fairly sure big, giant lizard dinosaur things wouldn't like that at all. Um, kind of looks like a completely different planet. I'm fairly sure the Earth didn't look that radically different, but I guess this program's not 100% accurate. Maybe it is, maybe it's not, I don't know. Anyway, that was interesting. Um, so yeah, okay, shall we try something a bit bigger now? So I do a fresh empty simulation and we'll plonk another Earth in, into space. Fresh Earth, unadulterated by my hands. It's a beautiful place we live, very special place. Please forgive me the time simulating, bombarding it with deadly objects. But I think we should see what happens when Earth and Mars collide. That would be interesting, I think. Let's go with... I need to launch it so it doesn't orbit. And let's go a bit further out. Let's try. And we need to slow down. Let me just pause things. Get set up. Um, if I stick it about there, boom, and we need to slow this down, else it's going to all happen far too quickly. That's slower than real time, that's like 800 milliseconds per second. Let's go with 2 minutes per second for a start, and we'll see, okay I've launched it, there's the earth. Not expecting anything out of the ordinary to happen today. Are we moving? We might have to speed things up a little bit more. Ooh. Ooh. Let's get a bit closer and slow it down. We kind of want to try and get close to real time. To keep it real. Ooh. Ooh. Mars should swing by now. And that's slow things down now. I think that's close enough. So we're at 20, 20 to 30 seconds per second. So time's traveling by 25, roughly 25 times faster than usual. Let's get lined up nice so we get a good front seat of this uh, spectacle, I guess it is. I may have to do a couple of uh, cut jumps with the editing so you don't get too bored waiting for this to happen. It's a bad day for the Earth because this is going to be insane. This planet does know it's supposed to impact with Earth, doesn't it? Oh, oh, here we go. Whoa. <sighs> Mars is kind of welding itself to the Earth. Look how hot that seam is there. You just wouldn't know what's hit you, really, would you? It'd be a nanometer thick if that hit you and superheated. It would be a quick death. Everything's starting to glow. Mars is just starting to get really super hot now. If I click on that and look at the temperature, we're up to 950 degrees Celsius on Mars, and Earth is up to 480 degrees Celsius. So, this whole, should we call it a kiss between Earth and Mars, is creating quite a lot of heat. And this is in practically real time. It's like two and a half seconds for every second. It looks like it's slow as viewed from this distance, but if you're on the planet near there, that's going to come towards you pretty damn quick, I should imagine. Shall we just speed things up a tiny bit so we get a sense of where things are moving? So we're at about six seconds for every second. When you get fragments come off, they're labelled fragments, so you can see that there are fragments flying off. But that is a third of the Earth so far, it's just molten. There's a mental shock wave going through South America now. Kind of reminds me of Armageddon. Oh, whoa, okay. Shit's getting real now. It's quite a few little, well, not little, they're probably hundreds of miles across, like secondary impacts from fragments in, in a kind of a octagonal pattern. I don't know whether that would actually happen. Maybe it's something to do with the rendering of this program, but I can't program a thing. So I'm incredibly impressed that 
someone's actually sat down or a team of people have sat down and try to emulate the universe's physics. That's um, an exciting project. Certainly more than a head scratcher for me if I had to do it. So I take my hat off to whoever made this happen. Yeah. I don't know what's going on now. There's a great big fire. Where is that fire? Let's have a look. People have still got their lights on. You know what, I don't even recognise where that is anymore. I think just off the planet's completely melted and continents aren't really recognisable on that side of the Earth anymore. All right. I don't think there's much point going forward in time. I think we all know that the Earth's dead after that. The temperature of the Earth is currently nearly a thousand degrees, so while the lights are working, I, I don't actually know. I think that could be an update for this very very interesting game maybe turn the lights off when the earth reaches a thousand degrees centigrade or maybe like about a hundred yeah the earth is a bit buggered really isn't it speed up time see what happens fragments catapulted out in space we're at about 40 seconds for every second lots of ejectors still going on we're now at about one hour for every second and things are getting exciting now. Look at that. We're almost forming a small ring system like Saturn. If there was slightly more ejector I, I could see that happening. All life is now gone I should imagine. Unless someone's got a Kevlar coated suit on. Okie dokie, I think that's enough abuse given to the Earth for one evening, I'll leave it there. Any suggestions for what else I can do on Universe Sandbox, just post it below. Um, feel free to subscribe, follow along, I do lots of different types of astronomy antics, mainly with telescopes and cameras, but I thought I'd give out this Universe Sandbox game a go, and I'm going to probably have some more fun with it, so I may do more videos on this. If you want to see any more videos on Universe Sandbox, just let me know down in the comments or give me a thumbs up and I'll catch you on the next video.